Today I want to talk about my experience using a M1 Pro MacBook as a developer. Now first and foremost, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Afraz, I make videos about coding, iOS, tech, and some random stuff here and there. One question that by far I get the most on this channel, comments, DMs, uh, what have you, emails is what MacBook or what Mac should I buy as a aspiring iOS developer? Maybe you're on an older machine. Maybe you just stumbled across the channel accidentally. And recently I upgraded my personal Mac. It's a 2021 MacBook Pro with an M1 Pro processor. Sounds a little redundant on the naming part for Apple, but it's been my daily driver now for, I wanna say about a month, a little less than a month. And I've got a lot of thoughts and I figured I could share and it would be helpful to someone watching out there. To get started, I'm gonna break the cardinal rule of all YouTube videos and I'm gonna give a concise answer and then we'll dig into the specifics. So the concise answer is you should absolutely get a M1 MacBook, whether it's the Pro or Max, we'll dig into in a moment, but it's gonna future-proof your development workflow it will definitely help. It is not an issue in terms of compatibility, Intel, uh, backwards compatibility, so on and so forth. Now, if you want to know the longer answer, start by dropping a like down below and let's dig in. So if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that sometimes in the background of my videos, you'd hear this annoying fan. Now, for those of you watching who use an Intel MacBook Pro or an Intel MacBook, whether it's, you know, an older model, maybe a more recent Intel-based MacBook Pro, you might know that your MacBook has a secret feature. And that secret feature is that it doubles as a SpaceX rocket. What I mean by that is when you hit Command B in Xcode, or maybe you just open two or three applications at the same time, your computer turns into a jet engine and it can be heard four rooms down. Now when I record videos, this is the absolute most annoying thing, even when I'm recording and talking, and I can't even imagine, for those of you who have watched a video over and over, how annoying it must be to hear this super annoying, uh, consistent fan in the background. Now that said, I do my best with mics and editing and noise cancellation, what have you, to reduce the background noise, but inevitably, it still leaks into the final video. Now making videos and choosing a MacBook uh, for that reason is not very common. Now, most people, of course, you're here to learn about MacBook Pros and what you should pick in an M1 Max or M1 Pro as a developer. So let's get into development situations. The M1 chip will absolutely blow out of the water any Intel-based chip. If you're compiling a big Xcode project, if you're working on uh, a bunch of applications that are open at the same time, be it heavy applications like Xcode, Chrome, Android Studio, the Adobe suite of applications, you're gonna notice not only is your computer snappy fast, but it is super quiet while it does that. In terms of actual time savings of compiling a large project, I can speak personally with a large project that I've got in mind, something that I work on on a weekly basis, and on the Intel-based MacBook uh, Pro, which was the latest, the i9 fully spec'd out, we would get a compile of, let's say, around 18 to 20 minutes, a clean, absolute build, cleaning derived data from scratch. Now that same project on the M1 Pro will get from clean to compiled in sub six minutes. Do the quick napkin math there, you're talking about 25% of the time it takes the Intel Mac. You're talking about uh, slashing 75% of your actual build time. That is huge when you consider how many times we compile throughout the day. I don't know if it's just me who changes colors and small UI elements and I like to compile over and over to see it run live in a simulator to make sure I haven't lost my sanity, but it certainly does add up very quickly. Now, one thing you might have noticed that I keep saying is M1 Pro. Now, for those of you who don't know, there is an M1 Pro as well as an M1 Max choice. What's the difference? Honestly, it beats me. The difference is in the spec sheet. However, if you actually get a M1 Pro and an M1 Max, what you'll notice very quickly is the performance is almost identical. Now, one large difference in terms of the spec sheet that you'll notice is that the M1 Max actually has uh, two cores more, I believe, than the M1 Pro, as well as a additional graphics card. If not a graphics card, it has beefier graphics in terms of the single card that it ships with. Now, I digress here, 
The reason that I didn't actually even bother looking at the spec sheet before this video is it's not really relevant to most developers. Most developers, be it web, that are working in, let's say, something like Atom or your IDE of choice and a browser, you're not going to notice a difference. Most developers, in this case on our channel, working on iOS apps, macOS apps, watchOS apps, you're not going to notice a difference. You usually have one Xcode window open, maybe two or three if you're crazy like me. Maybe you've got one or two simulators open concurrently. Maybe you're working with SwiftUI with the flaky uh, preview on the right hand side. Whatever you're doing as an iOS developer, you're not going to notice that an M1 Max and an M1 Pro make a substantial difference. Now there is a famous repo out there, which I'm going to link down below, where a lot of folks have taken this large project, which aggregates a bunch of dependencies, compiled it, and shared their build time results. Now looking at this repo and the readme that's included in it, you'll notice the M1 Max is indeed faster than the M1 Pro. Not all that surprising since in Apple's land, a Max item is better than a Pro item, which is also debatable. But you'll notice the difference in terms of how much better a Max is, you're talking about seconds, maybe four or five seconds. The largest difference you're gonna actually get from an M1 is going to be from the Intel-based MacBooks upgrading up to a M1 first generation, or in this case, the latest generation of M1-based MacBooks. Now, that said, Let's take a step back. It's not lost on me that M1 MacBook Pros are not cheap whatsoever. Even if you are in the market to trade in your older MacBook and get a new one, you're gonna end up spending at least north of $2,000, at least here in the States. Now, that being said, is it worth it? And should you be getting that as a beginner iOS developer or maybe someone who's learning? Now, the answer to this is very nuanced. If you feel that the amount of time you're wasting staring at compiles is not reasonable, absolutely you should upgrade if you have the means. Now if you are a beginner and you have a reasonable MacBook and you aren't dealing with the pain points of large scale applications, it might be worth waiting. Now the reason it might be worth waiting is by the time this video is maybe even uploaded or by the time this video is watched in a year from now, in 2023 or maybe the end of 2022, maybe we'll have the M1 MacBook Pro Max Ultra HDR display. And that one is inevitably going to be faster. We might get an M2. And now this is the this is the granted story with most of tech, right? Tech is going to get upgraded. Unless you need the thing now and you have a reason to justify the purchase, you might wanna, you know, hold off, you might wanna wait. That being said, as a developer, I'm in the camp where I find myself upgrading every two or three years, especially as I've started to make these videos, gotten on YouTube, needed to edit or make my best attempt at editing be it in Premiere Pro, be it in Final Cut, iMovie, it made a lot of sense for me to upgrade. But in terms of a developer, a M1, if you can get on the M1 bandwagon, is an awesome choice. You won't regret it. And that's all I've got for you guys today. Very short, sweet video. I uh, figured it was time I should make a video where I'm actually talking to you guys rather than sharing my screen since uh, I'm an actual person behind the computer, believe it or not. Um, recently, we hit 50,000 subs. I'm debating doing a Q&A video since I get a lot of questions, really awkward questions and really technical questions in the comments. So let me know down below if there's a particular comment or a question you'd like me to answer. Maybe you have a comment, some feedback that you'd like me to, I guess, address. I'm happy to do that as well. So stay tuned for that. Go ahead and follow on Twitter as well. I try to make an effort to be present there. Uh, that being said, I'm also very present and active on LinkedIn, so if we're not connected or if you're not following and you'd like to do that, don't forget to head on over to LinkedIn, links down below as well. And finally, if you haven't dropped a like, don't forget to do that, helps out quite a bit. Subscribe, thanks again for watching, I'll catch you on the next one.